What's up guys, welcome back to Spare Change. Today we have the UBPX 1000 ES 4K Blu-ray player, the follow-up to Sony's UBPX 800. The player retails for $699.99, a $400 premium over their entry-level $300 X800. I'm going to check out 4K disc playback as well as test out a few streaming apps. But before we do that, let's unbox this and see what we get inside. The player feels and looks the same as the X800. Inside we get the two prong power cable, standard Sony remote, Sony batteries, and manuals. On the right side of the player are the eject and power button. Under the drop down flap is the USB input for media playback. They've also included an LED display this time. This was missing from the X800. The disc tray hides behind a large drop down panel on the front of the unit. On the rear is the AC power and LAN inputs. Dual HDMI outputs, one dedicated for audio only. Coax output, IR and RS-232C inputs. Optical, left and right analog RCA outs. Now I'm going to run quickly through the setup. You'll be prompted with a software update notification. This update takes about 10 minutes. Now let's check out the settings. Let me just double check the software updates. It looks like we're good. Now a quick look at the accessibility settings. Screen settings. Keep HDR on auto. Display type, I'll choose projector since that's what I'm using. Output resolution. twenty four P output upscale and color space settings streaming and noise reduction my screen size is hundred and twenty six inches Now to audio settings. Now make sure BD Mix is off so you can bitstream properly. Bluetooth settings. View settings, parental control, music settings, system settings. I'm going to turn off HDMI control here since I don't need it. HDMI audio out is on HDMI 1. Network control settings if you're using any kind of home automation control. Now let's see how 4K displayback is. I'll pop Lucy in right now. It took about 10 seconds to load once you hit the play button. 
hit options to bring up video settings. You can have a couple presets here to tweak. The first three options are noise reduction options. These are something that I usually keep off. And you have contrast, brightness, color and hue options as well. If you hit the display button, it'll bring up disk info. Now there are no picture stretching options if you're an anamorphic lens user. I didn't expect to get it with this version. So if you're going to need that feature, you're going to have to get an Oppo 203. The picture quality looks pretty much identical to the X800, which isn't a bad thing. No issues with posterization or noise. So all good here. Let's see if YouTube has 4K and HDR. As you can see by the logos, everything works fine here. Now there is a little bit of banning, but it is YouTube that we're talking here. So it is a bit compressed. Now let's see Mad Max on Voodoo. We only have options for 1080p, so no 4K support here. Let's check Marco Polo on Netflix. HDR logo is present and outputting at 4K, so that's good. Now onto Amazon. Red Oaks I know is in 4K and HDR. But only 1080p here. Now I believe this player is aimed more towards the home integration and audio enthusiast crowd. The 1000ES is supporting a few things missing from the X800, such as a rack mounting option, removable power cord, direct IR input, and RS-232C 2A control for custom installs such as Crestron, Savant, Control 4, amongst a few others. It's also equipped with an analog audio board with a 32-bit DAC for the music enthusiasts out there, and since this is their ES line, you do get the 5-year warranty, so you should be worry-free for a few years. Now this is a solid performer, much like the X800. Now if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, follow us on social media, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys again in the next video.